thank you, Mr. McCrory. And I also like to thank uh, Mayor Kent and the City Council for giving me this opportunity to, to speak here. And today I'd like to present a proposal entitled Quantitative Determination of Fecal Pollution Sources at Fairhope Municipal Beach. My graduate student, Udenika Wajesinger, is, is in the audience here with, with us, and she will be doing most of the work. You, you, excuse me, you really need to speak right into okay. the microphone. We can't hear you. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> and my colleague, Dr. Westwood, cannot be here today because he has four classes tomorrow morning. <laughs> and we just heard that the city has been monitoring anthracoxide numbers in the beach water. Anthracoxide are a group of fecal indicator bacteria. PA use anthracoxide to monitor the both fresh and the marine water quality. There are other fecal indicator bacteria, such as E. coli, and they are used as indicator organism for fresh water only. So when we find high levels of these organisms in the water, we know there's a pollution. However, we don't know where they come from, what are the sources. So in order to figure out the sources of the contamination, we have to do microbial source tracking studies. So what is microbial source tracking? Microbial source tracking is the determination of the origins of enteric microorganisms in the environmental samples. There are many ways that we can do this. And uh, in the early days, we used library dependent methods. We have to collect fecal indicator organisms from different animal hosts, and then we build a library, and then we compare those organisms with those in the environment. It is fairly labor intensive and tedious procedure, and there are other drawbacks as well. Nowadays, the method of choice for microbial source tracking is the use of host-specific gene markers. So when we detect the host-specific genes in the water sample, that will allow us to trace back directly to the host. We collect the water samples. Uh, these are uh, eight proposed sampling sites, uh, one uh, at the pier of the Orange Avenue, another one right at the beach, and then the duck pond at the beach, and then there's a gully going by a wastewater treatment plant, and a will sample that there too. And then site five is at the outlet of the Flight Creek, and then we also like to collect uh, three more uh, wood collect samples from three more sampling sites along the Flight Creek, and the one by the uh, Flight Creek Cafe, and then also at the Scenic 98 Bridge, and also the, la the last one is nearby the <coughs> Woodlands Drive. Uh, the time schedule is like this. Uh, for the first three months of the study, and we're gonna uh, Mo uh, monitor three validated markers that we currently have. And then the next three months, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be validating two more markers, the Canada Goose and the Seagull markers. And then we will also uh, develop DNA fingerprints of anthracoxide. And then for the next summer, and then we'll be collecting water samples and uh, using all five validated markers to contact it full-scale study. And then the last uh, <coughs> three months will be doing data analysis and then providing the final report for the city. What do we expect to find? And we want, uh, we expect to determine whether humans, bovines, Canada geese, and seagull contribute to the fecal contamination at the beach or not and then if they do, and then to what extent they contribute. And then we also, we will also determine whether the beach sand is a source of a contamination or not. Uh, 